Belzeski, the PA announcer here at the Garden, has his starting lineup. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Madison Square Garden, the world's most famous arena for WNBA All-Star 2003. And now, let's meet this year's WNBA All-Stars. First up, for the Western Conference, making his second appearance as All-Star head coach from the Los Angeles Sparks, Michael Cooper. Also from the Los Angeles Sparks, assistant coaches Carleen Thompson and Ryan Weisenberg, and athletic trainer Sandy Teruya. And now, the players for the Western Conference. Voted as a starter, but unable to play due to injury from the Houston Comets, Cynthia Cooper. Also voted as a starter, unable to play because of injury, five-time All-Star from the Houston Comets, Tina Thompson. From the Los Angeles Sparks, guard Nikki T. Minnesota Lakes and guard Katie Smith. And forward from the Phoenix Mercury, Adrian Williams. Also at forward from the Sacramento Monarchs, Yolanda Griffin. The center from the San Antonio Silver Stars, Margo Dini. And a guard also from the San Antonio Silver Stars, Marie Ferdinand. And now, let's meet the Western Conference starters. Four, four times, top vote getter and forward from the Houston Comets, The top 
vote-getter for the East, a two-time All-Star, and forward from the Indiana Fever, Tamika Hatchings. And the other forward in her fifth All-Star appearance from the Washington Mystics, Shamika And center, making her fourth All-Star appearance from your New York Liberty, Tari Boots. <laughs> making her third consecutive All-Star appearance at guard from the Charlotte Sting, Dawn Staley. And returning for her fifth All-Star game at guard from your New York Liberty, Teresa Witherspoon! <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, your Eastern Conference All-Stars! One more round of applause for all of the 2003 WNBA All-Stars! And now, ladies and gentlemen, please rise for the singing of our national anthem. Please welcome Grammy-winning recording artist, Stephanie Mills. WNBA Shoot Around All Star Preview Show coming up next year on ESPN2. MLS Soccer, the Metro Stars, and the New England Revolution. And on ABC, join us for the fifth annual WNBA All Star Game. Nancy Lieberman and Bill Lane Beer will see you at halftime over on ABC. ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. For more, log on to ESPN.com. We'll see you over on ABC. New York. Basketball city in the world. Oh, 
Whoa, wait a minute, Sue. New York? Aren't you forgetting about Texas? Texas? New York? No, 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 guys. The best players come from L.A. Flint, Michigan, home of the Flintstones. The only place. Chicago. Philly. The best hoops, period. Ladies, ladies, okay. Let's see what you got. Let's settle this on the court. Oh, yeah, there's something about you. It is a star-studded afternoon here at Madison Square Garden at the corner of 33rd and 7th Avenue. It's the East against the West. And welcome to those of you who are watching us moments ago on ESPN2. Mark Jones along with Hall of Famer Ann Myers, Doris Burke, and Leah B. Olson joining us in just a minute at courtside. And it's been five tries now. This is the fifth. The East has never beaten the West. How did they get over the hump today? They closed the gap last year, losing by five points. But everybody's talking about the inside game. Certainly that's a big question. But with Hoseclaw and Ford, they bring it every night, a double-double. But look for the guards. I think they, the veteran guards, they're small, but they're mighty with Johnson, Spoon, and Staley. If they can get it done, they got a chance against the West. Hey, the Eastern Conference is leading the Western Conference in head-to-head -head meetings so far at the midway point here at the All-Star break. So let's start our starting lineups, beginning with the East. Dawn Staley, guard. Charlotte Stink, Risa Weatherspoon, playmaker. New York Liberty. Tamika Ketching, forward, Indiana Fever. Shamiqua Holsclaw, forward, Washington Mystics. Harry Phillips, center, New York Liberty. Sue Bird, guard, Seattle Storm. Tamika Dixon, guard, Los Angeles Sparks. Cheryl Swoops, forward, Houston Comets. Lauren Jackson, forward, Seattle Storm. Lisa Leslie, center, Los Angeles Sparks. Three-time MVP. Well, Lisa Leslie, one of 11 Olympians on display this afternoon on the 94 by 50 piece of hardwood. Lisa Leslie averaging almost 19 points a game on the season coming in third in the league in rebounding. There's what she's done in these all-star classics. She's been the MVP three times. She's She's got the lease on the hardware so far, in. And that other one goes to Tina Thompson from the West also. So see if somebody from the East can step up. And, and the big thing, we talked about the size, but also the perimeter. The West has always had the athletes, per se. Everybody says it gets up and down, but he's got some pretty good ones with host claw and catchings in there. Six first-time All-Stars on display as well this afternoon, and the question that has been begging all week long, for a couple of weeks, actually, can the East finally defeat the West? Nice block from behind by Tamika Catchings from the Fever. Oh, even though these players have fun, they go at it. Lisa Leslie with that newfound left-handed hook was rejected. Well, Shemiko Holzkopf guarding her a little quickness inside. Well, transition defense going to be a key, you would think, for the Western Conference. Got to get back. The well, ageless Don Staley out front running the show. Tari Phillips from New York with the layup. Tari Phillips missed a couple days. Missed the last game against Indiana as she was back with her mother, who was ill and now back playing in the All-Star game. New York Liberty, one of several teams in the Eastern Conference, vying nice for pass. second place. Lisa Leslie, meanwhile, inside. Cheryl Swoops just cutting across the baseline with a nice dish to Lisa Leslie. And everybody's got their new booties on today. <laughs> Boy, Lisa's are shining. Got batteries in those things. Nice reverse layup inside by Shamiqua Holesclaw, the Mystics. Shamiqua Holesclaw wearing that, lag, that black legging because she's had a hamstring pull all season. Well, Lisa Leslie with another bucket. She's got four, and you saw the West. They're going to try and push it as well. Knocked out of bounds. Michael Cooper, the head coach of the Western Conference All-Stars, telling me before the game, hey, we're going to put, put up at least or try to put up a dollar bill, 100 points at least in this ball game. And he put up his dollar bill yesterday when they're all <laughs> shooting half court. But the fans loved Michael Cooper's practice. They went one play. He said, we go up one play, we'll go from there and then run the transition. And then Richie Adubato came in. He's got his team ready. They got about four or five plays. Olsclaw's baseline jump shot off the mark. Leslie with the rebound. Knocked out of bounds. It'll be East Ball. Well, last year was as close as the Eastern Conference has gotten so far. 81 to 76. The two first ones were blowouts. And actually, last year's final score was a little bit flattering towards the Eastern Conference. It was. I thought Shannon Johnson really did some unbelievable things in that game last year. And those first three games for the West Coast by Van Chancellor from Houston. 
and two of those games were by Richie Adubato and Michael Cooper the last two years for the West. Here's Tamika Dixon off the miss. Dixon a key cog in the Los Angeles Sparks success here at the early part of the season at the Woodway Point. Swoops from outside, missing the three. Jackson battling and the Australian is fouled and she'll go to the foul line for two. Lauren Jackson, folks, the co-leading scorer in the league coming into this All-Star game, averaging 19.7 points per contest. The third-year pro from the Australian national team, one of the leaders for Seattle as well. Great numbers. Missing her first free throw, and there's a look at the Eastern Conference coach, the veteran of 19 NBA seasons, Richie Adubato. Is Looking for his first win in right, the All-Star game. The very first year was Linda Hill McDonald, who had coached at Cleveland, played in the finals against Houston. The last year was Ann Donovan, who brought that East team, where her Charlotte team were in the finals against L.A. Here's catchings out top. I should say in the finals in the East, New York ended up being in the finals. Off the miss. And here's Swoops. A quick run out, Leslie. She's out of the gate quickly. She's got six points in the ball game. The West leading by three, and she comes up with the pinch. Well, you're looking for those veteran guards from the East to take over, and the West staying on it. Well, Lisa Leslie uh, was serious when she talked about maybe getting a fourth MVP award here to this, today. Well, the, one thing, off the, miss. the one thing about most of these players, they're looking to dish it. I mean, they all play team ball. Even in an all-star game? Even in an all-star game, <laughs> especially for the women. Okay. I'll bet they don't get over 40. I don't get they they don't bet get over 35 assists combined between two teams. <laughs> Here's Staley. Nice beat inside to Holzclaw for the layup. Well, Shamika Holzclaw before going into the All-Star break was leading in scoring and rebounding before Lauren Jackson and Katie Smith took over that number one spot in scoring. Leslie from outside. She's got nine points. It's the three ball. I thought she had an injured wrist. <laughs> Wasn't that she was wearing a yes. wrist? She didn't practice yesterday, and either did Cheryl Swoops, who was in a boot. She had a shot in that toe of hers. She's had a bad ankle, missed a couple games. Now, really. I've noticed something early. I'm sorry to cut you off, but Lisa <laughs> Leslie is leaking out very early on the fast break. She's at midcourt. Is that okay, going to give her the MVP with all those points inside? I think we might be looking at perhaps a dunk as she gets her 11 points. Well, I know a lot of the players, especially from the West, they were talking about, if not Lisa Leslie getting that dunk, maybe Margot Dita. Margot had a dunk yesterday in practice with E. Yeah, running off a three-man weave drill. Going at half speed, she threw it down. And Michael Cooper told me before the game, they're going to do a little cherry picking. Have Lisa Leslie as well as Dita kind of hanging around half court. There's a look at the seven-foot, two-inch Polish player, Dita. And Leslie with the left hand. Almost had 11 points. Well, Lisa Leslie means business here in the shadows of Broadway. Getting out on the break and in the half court. Getting the easy bucket there and then on the move, on the run. And if two isn't enough, she extends the range to three-point territory. Back to New York after this. Smith. Catch and shoot. Three bottom. And she's out in front. She's got a red carpet in front of her. She lays it up and in. Oh, it seemed just so special. Can you stop her, ladies and gentlemen? That's the most points in the game, one? Yeah. And Cheryl might not play a lot. She's remember, she's out of the game right now. Lisa Leslie extending three fingers, signifying how many MVP awards she has in this WNBA All-Star Classic. Maybe. <laughs> Looking at number four right now, already with 11 of the team's 12 points. And it's funny, yesterday she skipped practice. I guess she was saving it because of that injury. Well, she doesn't look any worse for wear right now. 
Leslie knocks down the foul shot. That might be, if you want to nitpick, and the one chink in her armor this year is her free throw shooting. It most certainly has. Just over 60% before it was below that. And uh, she's worked on it all season long, though. It's more of a mental thing. But the West, 5 of 10 field goals. The East, 3 of 9 going in that timeout. And they've gotten some good shots and good looks at the basket. It's not falling for them right now. Here's catchings wide open from 16 feet. Bird with the loose ball. And look who the ball goes to. Jackson for three. Dixon pulls it back out. Lisa Leslie is playing so big in this game, it's like you can't miss her. And she's not shy, that's for sure. Tari Phillips on the run out. And Phillips from the Liberty breaks the drought. It's 14 to 8. She's got four in the ball game. Mentioned it a few moments ago, Tari Phillips recently rejoining this Eastern Conference team after being with her mother in Orlando, the result of a family emergency. There's Bird inside, and she didn't draw it up that <laughs> way, it but it went Leslie. in. Leslie's taking it, or they give it to Bird. <laughs> oh, they gave it to Sue Bird. I've got to see the replay on that one. <laughs> I'm not sure whose hand that went off. Lisa held up her hand like, yeah, it was off me. Yeah, she figured she was the closest to it. Phillips with the jumper. And Phillips has six. For the last two All-Star games, the West has scored 80 and 81 points. So, as you said, this looks like it's going to be a high one. A three-on-one. Holzclaw with the layup. And here comes the Eastern Conference just a little bit. Holzclaw with six. Dixon out front. Well, that's the first time they've made more than two passes in the half-court offense. At least the last one posted up. Just look at Bird's shot. Who did it go off of? It went off of Tari Phillips, or who is that? It went off of Holzklaw. It was Holzklaw. But who was closest, they gave it to Sue Bird. <laughs> We're going to take a seat, and folks, we hope you got a good look at Cheryl Swoops while she was in the ball game because Swoops bothered by a foot injury right now, and they were telling us before the contest that she would not get that much burn today. She wouldn't play that much. I tell you, though, when she was in, she was electrifying. Marie Ferdinand from San Antonio missing her first jumper. Swoops was the MVP of the league last year. Swint Cash. And Nolan also from Detroit in the ball game. They've got three first-time All-Stars from Detroit with four Cash and Nolan. Katie Smith from Minnesota, Adrian Wilson, Williams of Buffalo checked in, along with Nikki Teasley. Phillips missing inside. Williams with the rebound up to Teasley. Oh, <laughs> Teasley bringing a little street ball showtime into the mix. Don Staley dropping a nice dime. Ferdinand with a three on two, and Nolan picks it off. Ferdinand Let took it back. <laughs> Let's check in courtside with Leah B. Olson. All right, thank you so much, Mark. I'm here with Becky Hamm in the New York Liberty. Becky, since you tore your ACL June 27th, you've had surgery. How are you recovering, and um, what is your rehab schedule? Um, it's going really well so far. Uh, swelling has been, been able to keep it down to a minimal, and... Um, it's just going to be rehab every day, uh, and, you know, I'm I'm hoping around four months, five months, I'll be able to, you know, get back and do some stuff on the court. You are having a tremendous season, averaging 15 points per game, the best in your career. Did you feel like you were taking your game to the next level? Well, you know, it was, an, it was a situation where opportunity met hard work. I worked really hard in the offseason, and, uh, you know, it's just able to give an opportunity to come out and play, and I really felt like, you know, it just played well, and you kind of get into a zone a little bit, and uh, it was a lot of fun, and uh, I look to come back next year even better. We look forward to seeing you on the court next season. All right, thanks. All right, Mark, back to you. All right, thanks a lot, Leah. Interesting scene yesterday during the All-Star shoot-around in the practice end, and then as she was being, Hammond was being wheeled around the court, her teammate right there, Teresa Weatherspoon had her number and name written on her shoes in tribute to her teammate who's injured right now. And, uh, nice see the two of them very close. New York Liberty at 500 at the break coming off a loss against Indiana a couple of nights ago. But 6-2 and two at home.
Got to get things going on the road a little bit. And there's a look at Hammond's name and number written on Teaspoon's kicks. Well, they certainly miss her scoring. And she probably would have been voted most improved this season if she doesn't get hurt. She was just on fire. Had a game of 33 points against Minnesota. And Richie Adubano compared it to Bernard King as far as when he went off on 50 points. Well, in two weeks, Cheryl Swoops, the top vote getter here at the WNBA All-Star Game, leads the Houston Comics against T. Spoon, Tari Phillips, and the New York Liberty. The WNBA on ABC returning Saturday, July 26th, 4 Eastern, 1 Pacific on ABC. Well, I tell you, the fans may not know about her name as much Nikki Teasley, but if they want to see Showtime next year, just for some of the moves she's already put on, and we're not, easily better be right up there. Yeah, we're not that far from West 4th Street where, you know, you can pick up some of those. Uh, I think that move she did was called the slip and slide. <laughs> Seen that a few times, and Teasley cashes in a pair. Nikki <laughs> Teasley has really extended her leadership role with the Los Angeles Sparks this year, a big part of their success. And a lot of that has had to do with the relationship with Lisa Leslie and the confidence that Michael Cooper has given her in her game. Katie Smith got drilled by a screen. Nolan hits the three ball. And look at this, the East within one point. And you know Bill Lambert is up there liking it. He's got three of his, his players in there. All three first-timers from the shock. Easily one of the biggest stories in the WNBA in the first half of the season. Ferdinand with the jump shot off the mark. And the East now with a chance to take the lead. Shannon Johnson up court. Natalie Williams with the putback. Okay, there's some big players, but I think the person with the best vertical in this game right now is Shannon Johnson, the smallest player on the court. She can grab the rim, and she had a huge block last year against Natalie Williams when Williams was playing for Utah on the West. Swin Cash from outside. Well, she's been missing those shots, Bill Lambeer said before the game, but the last seven games, she has not shot from the perimeter quite as well, but she's getting good looks. Amanda Griffith with the layup for the Western Conference, and they lead 20 to 17. Nolan from outside. Tweety. Tweety's her nickname. The mom didn't come, doesn't like to travel, but boy, she can make that whistle. Adrian Williams got it back in a hurry, too, as we go up and down. Are well, you talking about the transition in this All-Star game? They had some transition defense, too. Adrian Williams with the breakaway foul from behind by Pee Wee Johnson. Adrian Williams leads the league with steals. Sometimes, folks, better to be lucky than good. Sue Bird will certainly testify to that. A look at the errant pass that went in a few moments ago. She says, yeah, I'll take it. So will we. We'll be right back. up by two points and we bring in Western Conference All-Star head coach Michael Cooper. Michael, it's Mark and Ann here. Hey, we spoke before the game. You said you wanted to put up at least a dollar bill, 100 points on the scoreboard. You're at a pretty good pace right now. What do you think, Mark? I, I like How you it. Do it. Get the ball up and down, taking some shots. Uh, see some great basketball. Again, it's a great venue for the ladies to show that women's basketball is here to stay, but uh, we keep shooting like this. Both teams will get that 100 points. Hey, Michael, you were working on those half-court shots yesterday, but how about that shoot by, shot by Sue Bird? Oh, I love it. I hope it comes into play. And if that happens, she throws one up and goes in as long as we win. But again, I think we'll get some good looks at the basket. Uh, they run a lot of two-man games. We made some adjustments here, so hopefully we can hold them down a little bit. All right, thanks a lot, Michael. We'll get back to you in the second half. Adrian Williams, meanwhile, knocks down the foul shot. She's got three points in the ball game. Adrian Williams just averaged over six points last year. Leading scorer on the Phoenix team this year with Jennifer Gillum joining the L.A. Sparks. Nolan comes up with a loose ball. Inside to Natalie Williams. Out of bounds, it'll be East Ball. Natalie Williams playing against the All-Stars that she usually plays with as her former teammate, Margot Dede, checks into the game for the Western Conference. The Yolanda Griffith. Utah team that moved to San Antonio this year, and they've been drawing really well. But they had asked Lisa Leslie yesterday, what about Natalie Williams being a little tougher inside for the East for you? She goes, ah, shame for her. <laughs> Too bad. 
One point ball game. Katie Smith off the mark. Smith, the co leading scorer in the WNBA so far at the break at 19.7 a game. Nolan looking inside. Williams had it knocked away, and she's fouled by Marie Ferdinand. Let's check in courtside with Doris Burke. Thanks, Danny Bobbitt, Sue Bird. Sue Bird, what is it like for a player from New York to play in a great exhibition game at Madison Square Garden? Uh, it's a special feeling. You know, MSG is a place where I came out as a little kid, watched the, the Knicks do their thing here, and just to be able to play on this court, it, it's an honor. Well, you've had the circus shot of the afternoon. What happened? <laughs> I tried to pass it. I don't know what happened, but it went in. Next thing I look up, it's going to the hoop. Thursday night, you'll go to your home away from home, so to speak. You'll play at Connecticut. Your thoughts on that basketball game? You know, Connecticut's having a great season. Um, but personally, obviously, I'm just looking forward to get back there. It's a place where I spent four years of my life. And uh, just to play in front of those fans again is going to be uh, pretty cool. Great memories of the University of Connecticut. Thursday night, ESPN 2, 8 p.m. Mark? All right, thanks a lot, Doris. Yeah, it should be a pretty poignant scene for Sue Bird. And the best news that I got prior to this game from Sue Bird is that she put me on the list for her after party tonight. You did go. Oh, I was working at oh, home. Oh, man. Yeah, I got in. I got my invite. How sweet that is. Teasley, a little showtime to Williams. Oh, I man. the layup. And she got it back and put it in. Nikki Teasley starting to light the place up in the shadows of Broadway. Teasley made it all happen. Swin Cash. I like that, Margo Dudek just keep it up high. Ferdinand with the layup. Boy, the Western Conference really getting out on the break. Well, we talked about the athletes, and the guards are so big for the West, and they're such good ball handlers. They get tough to guard on the perimeter. Andy Teasley fracturing some fibulas with that move. That's a little a la Magic Johnson. No carryover right here? No. No? That's None no carryover? <laughs> Heck no. Nikki Teasley, one of the league leaders in assists. Talked about her uh, expanding her leadership role for Michael Cooper and his 50-3 Sparks this year. Folks, your next three games in the WNBA on the TV docket. Wednesday at 8, Detroit taking on Indiana on Oxygen. Thursday at 8, Seattle taking on Connecticut on ESPN2. Then Tuesday the 22nd at 10 p.m., Washington takes on Los Angeles on Oxygen. Most two teams playing recently in Washington in the high scoring contest 94 to 91 the Sparks winning Los Angeles clearly the favorite you would think right now at 15 and 3 at the midway point well they are I mean they're the defending two-time champions they're looking for their back to back to back and they have struggled at home though they feel that you know they play a little bit better on the road they're able to concentrate but they've got good fans in LA Lisa Lussie challenged the fans in LA to cheer for them and boot the, boot the opponents Here's Johnson with 10 on the shot clock. Williams with the rebound. Williams inside, blow by Dede. Now Dede got off balance there. Dede doesn't have to jump, but Williams a little fake right there on the drive. Emily Williams making a nice adjustment to the Eastern Conference, and the Indiana Fever averaging about 13 a game. Here's Dede inside. Turnaround jumper is good. You know, Michael Cooper said that he wanted to try and go to her early in the offense to see if he can get her a dunk in the half court, not just in a situation where she has to run out and get one. Well, she's such a sweet kid, and, you know, she's been pressured, really, ever since she's been in this league to dunk at her size, and she's such a sweet kid, and she, she we know that she can do it. She's done it in warm-ups, but she doesn't want to embarrass herself in case she were to miss a shot. But Michael Cooper has said, boy, I'd love to work with her, get her footwork going. <laughs> Katie Smith, string music. You may not know much about the Minnesota Lynx, but you have to know about Katie Smith, one of the top shooters in the league, in the world, actually, in the women's game. And strong. She was lamenting the fact that she doesn't have a teammate here to play with to feed her the ball, to get her some jacks, get her some looks. Impressive numbers, though. Back right after this. Eastern Conference looking for its first win in five tries against the West right now trailing. Sunday's this fall, the rookies about to beat the man who will make them a cop. Danny Nucci and Ernie Hudson, 10-8, a new series coming Sunday's this fall to ABC. The Seattle Vitals team with a lot of work to do so far actually came out here and 
ran through what I saw to be three or four plays. Are you going to use them in an all-star <laughs> setting? What was that all about? <laughs> no, the veteran's like, oh, we can't learn this in one in a few <laughs> hours. We'll, we'll try it, Richie, but we'll go back to our own plays. <laughs> Rich, Richie's the veteran of coach of 19 NBA seasons. You know he's always got plan B or C. There's plan A. <laughs> <laughs> Good option. Catching. Makes it a three-point game. A 10-2 East run. Has them within three points. Ferdinand guarded by Weatherspoon, who's back in the ball game. Ferdinand. That is East team. They'll run, but there'll be a team that set it up a little bit more. Teaspoon turned it over. Here's Teasley. Never know what she's going to do. Don Staley getting on the floor. Don Staley going to her fourth year at Temple. Had a chance to talk to her before the game. She said, you know, being a coach, she's learned so much on how to deal with her players. Because they know what she's like as a player. Ball knocked out of bounds. It'll come back the other way to the Eastern Conference. And uh, joined right now by Eastern Conference head coach Richie Adubato. Richie, it's Mark and Ann. Uh, I got a guy talking to me over here. <laughs> hey, Rich, Richie. Yeah, well, we're running 15 now. She'll go down and get her. Hey, Richie, it's Mark and Ann here. You with us? You have to talk louder. I just hear, I don't hear everything. Hey, what are you guys trying to do here? Not throw it we're away. We're trying to run a lot of pick and rolls with uh, Vita. And we're trying to run some isolation for Katsin because she's unbelievable. Katsin's and Cash and Nolan have really shot the ball well for us. Richie, you guys have been on a big run. How have you guys been able to come back? Richie, how have you guys been able to come back and get him some good looks? Oh, you know, <laughs> for Natalie, yes. All right, Richie, we'll get back with you in the second half. Thanks. Williams inside. Richie's pretty wrapped up in this well, thing. <laughs> he wants to get an East win. It was his third try. Third time's a charm. Weatherspoon oh, with the drive-by. Back out to Catchings for three. Well, Spoon looked like she had the layup right there when she passed the defense, but hey, give it to Catch knocking down those three. Hey, maybe that's the key to getting the Eastern Conference some points. Distract Richie a little bit, huh? <laughs> Tedek with the rebound. They want it over the back. Natalie Williams doesn't get it. Catchings with the rebound. East up by three points. Weatherspoon inside to Williams. Boy, nowhere to pivot against Dita. Sales, feeling it. Nikisha Sales from Connecticut. But like Richie said, they're running some pick and rolls. And Natalie Williams, she didn't get in the way. She said a little pick for Nikisha Sales to knock that one down. They're knocking the outside shots down. Yeah, and Michael Cooper now looking at putting in five yeah. new subs for the Western Conference as they call timeout. The East leading by five. Nikisha Sales. Having a career year for Connecticut. Averaging almost 16 per contest. Showing you just how Nikisha got her groove back. And we'll be back after this. Welcome back to Madison Square Garden. He's shooting 50% from the field, leading by five. And after his historic win last weekend at the Western Open, Tiger now taking aim at the Claret Jug. Join ABC Sports for early round British Open highlights Thursday and Friday night at 105 Eastern and Pacific. Live coverage beginning next Saturday at 9 a.m. Eastern. And final round action tees off next Sunday at 8 a.m. Eastern right here on ABC Sports. Home of the British Open. Tiger uh, ending that so-called slump recently. In everybody else's mind, yeah. that is. <laughs> Eastern Conference uh, catching fire offensively and over the last two and a half. Sue Bird back in the ballgame along with Lisa Leslie, Tamika Dixon, Lauren Jackson, and Yolanda Griffith for the Western Conference. Well, the East has been able to knock down those three-pointers, four in this first half so far. Griffith stripped to the ball. Here's Sales. He's connected on her last two jump shots. They couldn't let him get away with that one. <laughs> Catchings called for the walk, and let's go to Doris Burke. Thanks, Mark. Standing by with SB nominee Cheryl Swoops. And Cheryl, once again, the leading vote getter, fourth time in five years in the best collection of women's basketball talent. How does it make you feel that the fans keep voting your, their favorite? 
Um, it's definitely a great honor for me and very humbling, and I'm very grateful. Um, seeing how we've had the All-Star Game for five years, and for me to be the lead vote-getter four out of the five years, obviously, is a, a great accomplishment for me and a huge honor. Very grateful to all the fans out there who voted for me for the four years. Obviously, the Houston fans concerned about your foot. Can you give us an indication of how you are health-wise? Um, well, you know, I tried to go a little bit at the start of the game. Um, and it's, it's very sore. I just got an injection in a Tuesday night. It's still a little sore. I'm going to come back out in the second half and try to play a few more minutes. Um, try not to let too many of my fans down but my the most important thing to me right now is to be ready for the second half of the season so obviously i miss not playing as much as i'd like to play an all-star game but i'll be okay good luck cheryl Thank you. we'll see you wednesday night whether she is the sb winner nine o'clock on abc and in two weeks new york and houston will square off mark back to you all right doris yeah gonna be a great night out of los angeles on wednesday the sb's on espn well, Lauren Jackson goes to the line. Well, Sue Bird, seeing where Lauren Jackson is, the defense is not getting back. But boy, is that pretty. Another look at it. And, you know, getting back to Cheryl Swoops, the fact that in 2001, she missed a whole season with her ACL and, and worked so hard to get back last year to become the league MVP. It was really important for her to do that because the year before 2000, she had been unbelievable as she led the WNBA in scoring and steals. Yeah, Swoops, uh, last week's WNBA Player of the Week, Staley in the lane, fouled by Griffith. Talked about the SBs a few moments ago. Let's take a look at some of the nominees. Catchings, Holzlaw, Leslie, and Swoops. Three of those players have won all, SBs already. All great honors. Catchings was Rookie of the Year in the WNBA. Holzlaw with an SB, Leslie with an SB, Swoops with an SB, and Catchings wants hers. Jamie Foxx going to be hosting the ESPYs on Wednesday. Uh, funny cat. He'll be clowning some people. Got to watch out what he says about you. You don't want to be, <laughs> become fodder for him at any point. And well, they have a great golf tournament, too. Good golf. Staley at the foul line. Weatherspoon comes out of the ball game. Don Staley has been cracking her teammates up. She has been the team crack up here, establishing herself as a comedic presence in the locker room in the short time that they've been together. Well, she and Lisa Leslie, has, they've been playing together since 92 on the USA national team. And they're like Mutt and Jeff. I mean, they're just always around each other. John Staley representing the old guard in the WNBA. Holtzclaw, the new school. Leslie, the old school rebound. Well, Staley came in really healthy this year, too. Her knee bothered her a little bit last year, but no, she has such tremendous leadership qualities. Here's Ketchings back the other way for the East, up by four. Holtzclaw. Phillips inside. Phillips has just got that little flip of the wrist. She's got eight points in the ballgame, under three minutes to go. Sue Bird trying to cash back quickly. He's trying to keep their lead. East has never won an All-Star game against the West in four tries. Catchings fouled on the play. Deanna Nolan to inbound for the Eastern Conference. Hey, Deanna Nolan, her time in there, she, she's an exciting player. Fast, quick. Bill Lambert says she's got to be more aggressive. Just now, really starting to realize some of her potential. Phillips cashing in on hers. Sorry, Phillips coming alive. And before this foul, the East were only two of two from the free throw line, not getting to the basket as much. Almost gave Lauren Jackson a punch after the celebration right there. <laughs> Lauren Jackson had a duck. Oh. Tari Phillips. Uh... Averaging almost 11 points a game for the Liberty. Hovering around that 500 mark at the midway point of the season. It's going to be interesting to see who can pick up the slack with Becky Hammond out for the rest of the season. Here's Bird. Griffith couldn't get a handle on the rebound. And coming up at halftime, it's the Herbal Essence and Halftime Report. Tamia performing live. We get a chance to see her rehearsal. Before the game, she's a great show and feature on Lisa Leslie, the queen of the MVPs. To me, of course, uh, married to Grant Hill of the Orlando Magic. Interesting dinners, huh? You think? I'd like to hear those conversations. 
They got a little one. Saw his daughter, their daughter here before the game. It's nice to see a lot of the players come out and watch her rehearse at halftime. Enjoying the show. How about Michael Cooper putting Cheryl Swoops back in? This one's over to us. Good hands, Mark. I think I can hang on to the ball, get it signed, take it home. Nolan to inbound for the Eastern Conference. The Detroit shock with three first-time All-Stars for the Eastern Conference. And Anna Nolan, Swint Cash, two of those three. Cheryl Ford, the third, the rookie. The big part of the big story in the early part of the season. Catching, catching fire from three-point territory. She's got eight in the ball game. The East is up 12. It's 17 to 3. Eastern Conference run. Hey, swoops back in the ball game. Wesley wheeling on Phillips for the layup. Well, at least Wesley said, hey, I haven't had the ball enough in my hands. Let me get hot again. Staley went behind the back. A lot of hands down there digging it. <laughs> Griffith came up with the loose ball from Sacramento. Yolanda Griffith has traveled a long, arduous journey through her basketball career, going inside to Leslie. And Leslie has 17. The meter is still running, folks. Oh, listen, Leslie with a little flex right there. <laughs> so a years ago, power. Lisa Leslie really went to work on her body the last two seasons, in part to try and shed that genteel label that some people tried to pin on her. She works so hard in the offseason, and the one thing that's amazing is her conditioning, and she's always ready to play. Nice matchup there between Jackson and Ketchings. Well, Lee's not getting the ball here, but down on the west, you see Lisa Leslie just, as you said, the physicality right there, and Kari Phillips wanted to do second call, said, how long do you want me to guard her? <laughs> Bird missing inside, Holt's Claw coming back. Holtzclaw playing in front of the hometown fans, a New York native. How about Holtzclaw and Bird? A lot of battles there with Tennessee and Connecticut. No doubt. Connecticut with three players in this All-Star game. Tennessee with two. Louisiana Tech with two players. And how about USC with four? Cindy Cooper and Tina Thompson hurt. Representing big time. Five to go in the half. Staley got to go to work. Don't get it off in time with 0.7 to go in the half. Shot clock violation didn't hit anything on the field goal attempt. Never thought I'd see a shot clock violation in an all-star game. But what's happened, the clock, the game clock up high has gone out. And I think the players are having a tough time seeing it. Michael Cooper going to call a timeout. The East, meanwhile, with 12 turnovers in the first half. Take a look at our Bud Light Peak performers. There have been some very incandescent performances during the last week. Katie Smith with 34 Thursday, Kentix with 31 a couple of nights ago, and Dixon with a big game against Washington, a season high 28. Griffith, Leslie, and Holzclaw, the leading rebounder in the league at the break. At the end of the season, the WNBA players who lead the league in scoring and rebounds sharing 25,000 bucks. Compliments of Bud Light, a portion of which will be donated to each of the players' local charity of choice. And what about Washington and Holzclaw's crew? Arguably the biggest disappointment at the All-Star break. Well, really a surprise. 2 and 14, Mary Ann Stanley was coach of the year last year, and their very first year as an expansion team, they were 3 and 27, and then in 2000, 12 and 20, but they went to the, the playoffs, and they really built themselves up, and then what's happened i can't tell you because they've got a lot of the players back but vicky bullet retiring i think really hurt them trying to get off a quick shot and jackson can find the handle that's the end of the first 20 minutes of play it's an eight point ball game and tamika catchings caught fire late in the first half for the eastern conference from inside and outside the sophomore from tennessee Representing the Indiana Fever. Doing it all over the court. And Leah B. Olsen is standing by with her right now. All right, thank you so much, Mark. 
Tamika, you go into um, halftime with an eight-point lead. What are you doing to keep that lead and keep on top of this Western team? I think we need to come back out after the second half and just keep pushing the ball, you know. We're playing great halftime, de uh, half-court defense, so we just got to keep playing defense, get back. They got a lot of transition points, but hopefully we'll be able to pick them up. You see they're trying to work it inside constantly to Lisa Leslie. How are you defending that? Well, I mean, you can't stop a great player like Lisa. You know, you just have to try to make other people do it and try to keep the ball out of her hands, but it's kind of hard, so... Uh, we just have to, you know, try to contest Lisa. Hopefully she'll miss. Good luck to you in the second half. Thank you. Back to you, Mark. All right, thanks a lot, Leah. Yeah, Lisa Leslie with 17 points at the break. The East leading the West, 46 to 38. And uh, you know what, Pam Ward, uh, you got to call Lisa Leslie the landlord right now because they got to pay her rent inside. Well, I tell you what, they are the shock very well represented. Coming up on the Herbal Essences Halftime Report, four-time Grammy nominee Tamia after this message and a word from our ABC stations. The East has a lead for the first time in any All-Star game at the half. Welcome back to the Herbal Essences Halftime Report. Now we have a treat as Tamia is here, the four-time Grammy nominee. Her second album went gold, and now her follow-up still hits record stores August Ladies 19th. Here's Tamia. Please welcome Electra recording artist Tamia.
Job, knocking those shots down. They've done it. They've hit the outside shots, but sometimes when you live with the outside shot, you're going to die by it. But five of eight from three-point range, shooting 49% in that first half. You see the 26 points in the paint. Get back on defense. The West has got 11 on those fast break, but I like the way the East is distributing the ball. 12 assists. Lisa Leslie, meanwhile, for the Western Conference, 17 points. The rest of the team with just 21. He got out of the gate very quickly, running the floor for some easy layups. Seven and nine from the field, total of 17 points. Eyeing perhaps her fourth All-Star MVP award, but have a sneaky feeling that Tamika Catchings might have something to say about that before it's all said and done. Well, Catchings only eight points in that first half, but she was two of two from three-point range as Deanna Nolan was. What about Tari Phillips, the local favorite, perhaps, for the MVP award? Well, 5 of 8 from the floor, 11 points. And then again, Dawn Staley distributing the ball. Sue Bird looking to get off for the West. Wesley stripped by Catchings among the league leaders in steals. Recently had her steals record broken by Tisha Pinachero, who had 10 a few nights ago. Dawn Staley looking to break Tisha Pinachero's assist record for the All-Star game. Look at our scoring leaders from the Eastern Conference. Phillips from the Liberty leading the way. Well, the West have done a good job keeping the leading rebounder in the league, Samiko Holzfall, off the board. She's only got one rebound. Bird for three. Got it. Well, you're waiting for her to warm up. She missed a couple threes in the first half. And she had won $100 from <laughs> big Michael Cooper yesterday when they were all shooting from the half-court range. She was one that knocked it down, the but New York kid. It, I don't know if she's going to get to keep the cash because oh, that's she, right. was, she for was Cheryl shooting Swoops. for Cheryl Swoops, who was injured. Second shot, that's right. I, You know, Swoops has got to go. He's got to give her a percentage, for crying out loud. Yeah. Tari Phillips uh, collared and clotheslined Sue Bird, shaking off the cobwebs right now. Yeah, you can't take that whole thing. you got to give it to your partner. There you see uh, Tari Phillips like, get out of my way, Sue Bird. I'm swimming through. Just a little overzealous on the fifth attempt. Leslie inside with the left-handed hook. Boy, if you're getting your first look at Deanna Nolan, the first thing that jumps off the page at you is her athleticism. I mean, she can really jump and run in the open court. She was a number six draft in the 2001 by Detroit. Fought some injuries. She's out of Georgia, played for Andy Landers. Did a lot of things for Andy Landers, passing the ball, rebounding, and scoring. A lot of scoring. Couldn't pull down the rebound that time, but she got it underneath. Ellen had to go in and out. Lauren Jackson with those long arms at 6'5 and strong. Cheryl Swoops back in the ball game, fouled on the play by Tari Phillips. That's her third foul. Actually, fourth. Well, from Danny DeVito, we brought you uh, Get Shorty, Bolt Vinchin, and out of sight comes his newest creation, U.S. Marshal, Karen Cisco, Wednesday this fall on ABC. I like that. A woman prominent in that role. <laughs> East with a five point lead, and Cheryl Swoops, the leading vote getter among all the All Stars, knocks down the first foul shot. Last week's WNBA Player of the Week. Playing on a bad wheel. That was her first point of the ball game. On the WNBA in their seventh season, and this is the fifth All-Star game. Did not have it the first two years. The first year, Cheryl Swoops was pregnant with her son, JJ. And he just turned, well, you can add it all up, right? <laughs> right there from when she was pregnant. And she came back and played nine games and, uh, you know, did a tremendous job. Catchings almost had to go out of bounds. Ten on the shot clock. Swin Cash had it knocked away by Jackson. 
Four on the shot clock for Shannon Johnson. Good defensive sequence that time by the Western Conference. And they give it right back to Cash. That's money. He's got six. Oh, a little backcourt. Tamika Dixon coming from the backcourt to get that ball with the pass, looking for the fast break opportunity. And the East picking up their defense a little bit. Perhaps. Off that steal with Cheryl Swoops. Two Detroit shot players on the floor right now. Haven't seen that much from Cheryl Ford, the rookie yet. Here's Nolan, her teammate, taking care of business in a big way. She's got 10 points as Becky Hammond watches her Eastern Conference teammates. Well, in the second half, that's what the East is going to have to do is double and triple team. Lisa Leslie get the ball out of her hands. And that was a nice help by Nolan. She knocks it down on the offensive end. And you see Teresa Weatherspoon for the East liking what she's seeing from the youngster, not only on the offensive end, but the defensive end. Well, you know, Bill Lambeer actually read her the riot act at the start of the season, said, listen, if you're not consistent, you could be out of here. Sometimes it takes that special coach, that special person, to get someone's attention to motivate them to play. Cash rejected at the cup. Here comes Sue Bird in a hurry. Dixon with the jumper. This is going to be an interesting jump. Well, Lauren Jackson picking some things up. They're going to call the out of bounds rather than the jump ball. And Tamika Dixon coming off a career high the other night against Washington with 28 points. And she is struggling in this game. No points. East up by seven points. Shannon Johnson all the way to the basket. Oh, this why does that not go in? Too much room for it to bounce around him. Too open, maybe. There's Swoops out front. Under 17 minutes to go in the second half. I like those patriotic shoes she's got on. I wonder if the batteries are included. <laughs> Laura Jackson told me before the game she hopes that they're watching on the bird back home in Australia. Mom and dad and her brother. She has seven points in the ball game. Got Lauren Jackson in her third All-Star game. Star for the Seattle Storm. Cash rejected inside. Here's Dixon. Tried to hit Leslie with the pass out of bounds. It'll be Western Conference ball. Jackson, probably where she's known so well is that outside shot. She's strong, she's big, can put the ball on the floor, but doesn't probably get as much credit for her defense where she came up with that big block. At 6-4, maybe 6-5, I don't think there's a more athletic player in the league than Lauren Jackson right now. And at her age, 22, she's only going to get better. Both her parents played for the national team in Australia, her mom and dad. Her mom, mom played over here in... The United States at LSU, where Marie Ferdinand went to school, played for Sue Gunner. Of course, Gunner wasn't a coach back then. <laughs> Out of bounds, it's a four-point game. Lauren Jackson telling everyone here, good day. It is for her. Phillips, pretty good afternoon so far. 11 points along with five rebounds as the East holds the lead right now. And folks, you can vote for the WNBA All-Star MVP. Log on to WNBA.com or get a ballot on your Verizon wireless phone by sending the text message MVP to 9622. I'm going to hold up on my vote right now. Well, while we wait, folks, I want to let you know that three great games coming up on your NBA TV docket Wednesday at 8. Detroit hits the road a little bit now in the second half of the season. Going to be interesting to see how they do. They take on Indiana. Then Thursday, Sue Bird heads home to Connecticut on ESPN2. 
Tuesday, the 22nd at 10, Washington takes on the Los Angeles Sparks. And uh, Sue Bird going to be matched up against one of her former teammates in Connecticut. Keisha Sales having a nice season at about 16 a contest. Well, Connecticut 9 and 10, not too far back. They've had some tough games. They beat New York the other day. And, you know, you look at in, uh, Seattle, they're 9 and 7. They're just a game back out of second place on Houston. Bird off the Jackson screen. They've run that play a few times. Williams inside up to Johnson. High speed inside to Swint Cash. Who couldn't miss earlier. Ah, oh, Lisa delayed. Leslie not getting the call. She thought it was going to go the other way, but he's missing some inside shots off those layups. Nolan coming out of the ball game. Actually, she's going to inbound. Teasley comes in for teammate Tamika Dixon. If you're just joining us, Nikki Teasley has made some of the more spectacular eye-popping catches and uh, passes so far. Well, the East continues to hit those outside shots, but I like those dribble penetrations inside, and if they keep missing, the West can get the rebounds and go, but right now they're struggling. Let's check in with Doris Burke, who has a special guest. Well, soap opera stars will recognize him from All My Children and General Hospital. Matthew St. Patrick, you've got a great new hit show, Six Feet Under, on HBO. Tell us about the show's success and how it's changed your life. Oh, uh, <laughs> it's been an incredible opportunity for all of us that are involved. Uh, it's, it's changed my life because uh, it just kind of introduced me to a different uh, viewership. Uh, the writing, the other actors, HBO being extremely supportive and... Uh, you know, and it's just, it's an amazing place to be. It really is. And it's a character that I really enjoy playing. Well, you certainly dress like a basketball player. Oh, Are yeah. you a big fan of the women's game and why? Absolutely. Well, I just think it's about time, you know, that first of all, that the women have their own league. You know, there's a lot of women, a lot of young girls, as you can see, that are out here that, you know, put their heart and soul into basketball, just like the guys do. <laughs> basketball was actually a dream of mine. That was my first dream. And it never came true, but I had some other dreams as well. And I think that they deserve their shot to shine, and I think the Thank league is doing so a great job. Thank you so much. Appreciate it, Matthew. Good Thank luck you. this season. Mark, back to you. All right, Doris, as we look at Lisa Leslie, who was shaken up during that last sequence. Let's well, take one look at exactly what transpired. Swin Cash had the drive, and Lauren Jackson came to help out, and you can see Cash falling on Lisa Leslie's right knee after the follow-through, and Lauren Jackson with another big block for the West, but watch that. Oh, the follow-through, and Lisa Leslie, who does not get injured. We talked about the conditioning she does, how strong she's been every season, and she takes such good care of herself. This could be devastating for the Sparks, and Michael Cooper is not happy. I don't want to speculate as to the extent of that injury yet. We hope to get a report in just a minute, but Lisa Leslie remains on the court, lying down. We'll be right back after this. Emerging off the court after this injury. Here's how it happened. Swin Cash falling on her knee from the side. Well, Lauren Jackson with the weak side help and a little body bang right there. And then Swin Cash is falling right into Lisa Leslie as they landed. That knee buckled under and, and hopefully it's not going to be anything serious. Really no defense against somebody rolling up on your knee like that. And the Sparks play Tuesday at home against Phoenix. And then Friday at home against Houston. Cheryl Swoop's going to try and take charge, and she does with the layup. There's Cash at the other end. Another missed layup for the East. They've missed their last 10 field goal attempts. Well, and it's a two-point ball game. And if the West just really takes charge, and Cheryl Swoops, who's an MVP, and Lauren Jackson, who's a, an Olympian for the Australian team, and you got such great players to step up for Lisa Leslie. Yeah, Jackson with nine points, not at 50. Under 14 minutes to go. But you know in that first half, Lisa Leslie was looking for another MVP, boy, on that shelf. Working on her leg right now on the bench. Here's Swint Cash. Catchings. 
Seven on the shot clock. Great show and go by Catchings, rejected by Griffith at the cup. Let's get more on Leslie's injury from Doris Burke. Well, guys, since Michael Cooper is the head coach of the West, he brings his entire staff, and that includes his trainer, Sandy Teruya, who is at the moment checking the stability of Lisa Leslie's knee. We'll have more as soon as we can get it to you guys. All right, Doris. Well, and, that, and that's you true. That's a great comfort yeah. zone for Lisa Leslie to have her own trainer there. And you have to assume that Cooper will err on the side of caution, and if anything, Keith Cooper, uh, Keith Wesley on the sidelines for the rest of the game. Now, it was down to one second off that block shot, but they got a reset of the 30-second shot clock. The Western Conference with a chance to take the lead here. Swoops fouled by Sales. Well, watch out for that fast break. The West has tied it up, and they're looking to run. Good outlet pass, and Cheryl Swoops just leading the pack. When the West gets somebody out that early, the East, somebody, transition-wise, has to get back. Now, Tamika Catchings has been kind of floating back as a defensive player to stop that offensive rush that the West has had. But right now, the West is still looking to push it. Is the Wesley uh, shaking her head by that picture? I would assume that it doesn't look like she might be back anytime soon in this ball game. You certainly don't want to jeopardize the situation. As much as a, she's a competitor and wants to play the game, you've got to look for the season. Hey, the East hasn't scored in the last 420. Missing their last 12 field goals. Here's Teaspoon out front. To Phillips. Williams with the putback, finally ending the drought. The Eastern Conference All-Stars looking for their first win in five tries over the West. Well, as fast as this game started, we thought it might get to 100. But now, a little bit more defense is going on. And some few more shots missed. Cheryl Ford for the East getting sent to check into the ball game. Lauren Jackson off the mark. Weatherspoon put it on spin cycle. Teaspoon fouled by Griffith. The love affair between the fans here at Madison Square Garden and Teresa Weatherspoon continues to burgeon. Now, Teaspoon making, as you said, the spin cycle right here. She's seen some of these other youngsters doing the same thing. She wanted to have the opportunity, and here's a great chance for her to score. Gets fouled, and talk to Leon Barmore, her college coach, who she is still very, very close to, and Cheryl Ford said, hey, she's a warrior. She's going to come out every game. Missing the free throw, though. Tomorrow, some of the PGA Tour's best team off in final round action at the Greater Milwaukee Open at Eastern at 11 a.m. Pacific, right here on ABC Sports. Home of the British Open. That continues to be the bane of Weatherspoon's game, her shooting. Fortunately for these, they get the ball back. And Ferdinand caused the steal. Keisha Sales saying, you're not going to do that on me. <laughs> She's easily trying to rope a dope move. Griffith wide open. I think she was surprised that nobody was guarding. Well, that was wide open. I think because of the double team helping out, they left her. Got it at 52. 12 minutes to go. Mark Jones along with Ann Myers, Doris Burke, and Leah B. Olsen here in Madison Square Garden. It's the East against the West in the fifth annual WNBA All-Star Game. One of the big stories of the ball game so far, Lisa Leslie injured a few moments ago. Will she return? We'll be back after this. 11.56 to go in the second half. The Eastern Conference and the Western Conference nodded at 52, but there's part of the big story. Lisa Leslie injuring her leg a few moments ago when Swint Cash fell on her under the bucket. And right now, we're going to check in with Doris Burke. Doris? Mark, uh, joining Lisa Leslie back in the West locker room is Liberty team doctor, Dr. Susan Scott, and her husband, the Nick team doctor, Dr. Norman Scott, and he, of course, is the gentleman who operated on both Bernard King and Patrick Ewing. As soon as we get more from the locker room, we'll send it back over to you guys. All right, thanks a lot, Doris. Right now, uh, Western Conference All-Star coach Michael Cooper joining us. Uh, coach, it has to be 
your worst nightmare to see your best player uh, not leave a, the floor. It's not a worst nightmare. They got to call the fouls. I mean, the players are playing hard. I understand they want the players to make it, make the game happen. But you got to call the first one so you avoid those second and third and possibly injury like this. But um, hopefully everything is all right, and uh, we're still looking to win this. Michael, what do you have to do different in this second half? Do a better job rebounding, boxing out. I think they're giving them too many second and third shots. And we got to get that ball inside. All right, Michael, thanks a lot for joining go, us. Go, it was a tough call on Cheryl Ford, and Yolanda Griffith was looking to get position. She's Cheryl, I talked to Cheryl last night, Cheryl Ford, and I said, what's different from college and, and the pros? She said, well, I thought they'd let you play up here. <laughs> and there she gets called for, I'm sure she thinks, kind of a ticky-tack foul. Cheryl Ford averaging a double-double on the season, 11 points and 12 rebounds. A front runner for the rookie of the year. Maybe the only candidate right now. I mean, she is well ahead of the field. Griffith took it right over the top of the rookie on that play, though. Yolanda Griffith talking about her traveling a long, arduous road in her basketball career. At one point, to make ends meet, she had to repossess cars. Made the decision to go to Germany and make a living over there and bring her daughter with her. Carol Ford with the foul line jumper. Here's Ferdinand. Marie Ferdinand in her second All-Star appearance. So inside the double team on Griffith and good defense by Cheryl Ford that time. It'll stay with the West. Well, as Michael Cooper said, they're trying to go inside with Yolanda Griffith where she's so good with her back to the basket. A little bit different player than Lisa Leslie, but the East looking to double down. Teasley outside. She has hit so many big threes. And there's another one. Nikki Teasley knocks down the three ball, giving the West its first lead in a long time. They've been pretty quiet shooting that three-pointer in the first half. But it was the East that was dominating with three-point shots, and they have not had the opportunity to take those outside shots. A little miscommunication right there because Phillips and Cash looking for the back door but didn't follow through with it. There's Swoops in transition. Adrian Williams got a nice roll. Williams from the Phoenix Mercury knocks it down. Now the East had set a record of 46 points in the first half of the All-Star game of any half for both the East and the West, but right now they are not getting any points in the second half. Well, and it's interesting. You see the best player on the floor go down, Lisa Leslie. You would expect a letdown from her team, the West, but instead they picked up the tempo to lead by five with 9.56 to go. Well, speaking of Leslie, one of the nominees to receive an SB this year. And on one night of the year, we're all fans, folks. You've seen the promos. Relive this past year's greatest moments and most astonishing accomplishments and celebrate your love of sports. Jamie Foxx hosting the 11th Annual SB Awards presented by GMC Wednesday at 9 p.m. Eastern on ESPN. Coverage beginning with the red carpet special at 8 p.m. Eastern time. There's a look at the four nominees. That's going to be a fun night. That's the WNBA player in 2002. Who do you like to win this one? I mean, Catchings was the rookie of the year. Polska led the league in points scored, points per game. Swoops and Leslie, tough to go against. Swoops was the league MVP, and Lisa Leslie was the MVP of the championship game, and uh, it's tough. I mean, I, I'll I, go with Leslie. I, I, I'm going with Catchings. Oh, that hometown stuff. Huh? Oh, you got to. <laughs> we go to LA soon, right? <laughs> Here's Ferdinand. And Ferdinand commits the foul. This is her second All Star appearance, second year pro, and uh, she was saying that this year was more out of respect. She felt that she earned the respect of the players and coaches because she wasn't voted in so much by the fans as a starter, but she replaced the injured uh, Cynthia Cooper of the Western Conference and felt good about how she got here nonetheless. And Nikki Teasley replaced Cynthia, or I should say uh, Tina Thompson also. Tina Thompson, yep. But uh, I think the fact that Marie Ferdinand has shown what kind of player she is in the short time she's been in this league, and she's gotten better this year, stronger and improved her outside shooting. Weatherspoon off the mark, here's Teasley. Stopped in the three-point line. That's her layup. Yep. <laughs> Swint Cash. It's a three-on-two. Teasley. Oh, dropping a dime like a bank teller. Nikki Teasley. 
Up. She knows exactly where her teammate is. She knows the defense. She's got it exactly spread out. She practices these plays and these moves and these releases. But how about the follow through by Yolanda Griffith just finishing the shot with the pass by Teasley, Nikki T. Nice stat line for the second year player from Los Angeles. Five points, four rebounds, and assists. Her first All Star game, and the first of many. She understands. You get the feeling she knows what this All-Star Showcase is all about. Holds clock. Sorry, Phillips quiet in the second half. She had 11 first half points. Ferdinand. The West kind of chipping away right now, slowly moving out. But a turnover right there for the East to get back involved. And Richie Adubato going to try and get Tamika Catchings back in the ball game. There's Don Staley. Now Indiana had that huge win against New York the other night. The only undefeated team at home, and New York had an 18-point lead, and Tamika Catchings said she had talked to her dad, Harvey, in the morning and said, Look. and he told her, you've got to be the go-to player. You've got to finish shots. You've got to be the one to take over. She goes, he got me mad. <laughs> And boy, did she take over the end of that game. Well, the two players from the Fever checking into the ball game, Williams and the aforementioned Catchings. This All-Star weekend has been a real family affair for Tamika. Had a chance to take a flight with her and her sister, Taja. And uh, her sister was the one that hooked her up last night with the outfit that she was wearing at the pregame gala. A lot of Nicole Miller, I think, on her. Nope. Birdman inside. <laughs> Good pump fake by Ferdinand, no foul, got the cash up on her feet. I should say Nolan. The Western Conference storming back. They lead by 10. This is the Western Conference biggest lead of the ball game, 10 points. Nine on the shot clock for Ketchings. Ferdinand almost came up with the pitch. Time out on the floor, and what about number 40 deuce, Nikki Teasley? You gotta call her power steering because, folks, she's got handle. And the bench loves it too. How can you not? 10 point lead when we come back. Well, the Eastern Conference, a lot of work to do to get its first win over the West in the All-Star Classic. Log on to WNBA.com to place your bid in this year's WNBA Breast Health Auction. From jerseys autographed by All-Stars to a game, of course, with your favorite WNBA player. There are loads of great items to choose from, and all proceeds benefit the Susan G. Komen Breast Cancer Foundation. A great cause and some great items and things available. And speaking of great items available, Jersey, selling LeBron, signed by LeBron James, James, the signature, LeBron and James, uh, Cleveland. WNBA basketball autographed by all the All Stars. Uh, it works, eh? Wait, it works for real. Hey, this one's going right in the bag for me. You use that in the in the game? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Get to uh, play horse against Sue Bird. A lot of different players. A lot of great items. Log on to WNBA.com. Take a shot at it. Give that jersey back. <laughs> Yolanda Griffith inside. You know, my sister and I went to a Laker playoff game this year and sat next to LeBron James and his mom and just really a class kid. It was polite to everybody and everybody really enjoyed the conversations with him. It's the last time he'll be sitting in the stands. Yeah, no doubt. Don T Staley outside, missed everything. Let's get more on Lisa Leslie from Doris Burke. Doris, what's up? Well, Mark, we just found out that Lisa Leslie will be taken to Beth Israel Hospital to have an MRI on that right knee, similar to what happened to Becky Hammond when she injured her knee here at the Garden, guys. Well, we can only hope that it's not serious. Uh, of course, she's in good hands with Dr. Norman Scott, trainer for the New York Knicks. And she hasn't missed a game this year either. Ketchings comes up with a steal. Lisa Leslie has been a real paragon of endurance and consistency. Staley knocks down the three. It's a nine-point ball game. That breaks a 14-0 Western Conference run. 
You know, we talked about the outside shot that the East has really kind of brought them back in that first half and gave them that lead. Marie Ferdinand saying, how can you call that one? <laughs> I can tell you how you call it. In an all-star game, when one team is down by more than eight points, <laughs> it's got to go to the other squad. It's got to go to that squad. Oh, yeah, you played in these, huh? Uh, yeah. <laughs> Bailey tries her luck again. Well, Williams was looking for somebody to cut and said, hey, I've practiced against Marco Dietrich enough. I know what kind of shot I can get off. Over her former seven-foot-two-inch teammate. It's a seven-point contest. Dita calling for it on Holtzclaw. Ferdinand with a foul line jumper. Nothing but string music there. Six-point performance by her. I mean, every player deserves to be here, but it's unfortunate that Cleveland has not had a representative in this game. They're the one team that didn't get somebody picked. Jesse Melvin was having a pretty good season, too. Well, next Saturday, ABC Sports uh, takes you to beautiful Lake Tahoe for the 2003 Great Outdoor Games, presented by Dodge. Next Saturday, 3.30 Eastern, 12.30 Pacific, right here on ABC Sports. Staley out top, five and a half minutes to go. Hold squad. Showing her ability to handle the ball. And how about catching with the big rebound? And the reverse. He's got 10. Out of bounds, Eastern Conference ball. Tamika Ketchings, Holstaw trying to get things going, but look at Ketchings, works so hard to get inside and knows 7-2 Dedek is on one side, goes to the other side. Ketchings now, isolated on the shorter Katie Smith. Faced up on her and committed the foul, but that's one thing you have to point out that Ketchings does as well as maybe any player in the league. She always follows her shot. There's no other player in this league that I've seen that follows her shot. Tamika Ketchins is it. And you will get not only a lot of rebounds, but second and third opportunities. Ketchings has used basketball to overcome some early adversity in her life, a, a hearing deficiency. But it hasn't slowed her down one bit. A very successful and charming lady. The WNBA has run a a test this year with it, uh, who's the most efficient player in the WNBA, and it has been voted to make a catch. There's Deanna Nolan. Inside to Williams. Holtzclaw wide open. Can't get it to drop. Things got a lid on it for her. Still a seven point game. Ferdinand. Adrian Williams calling for it inside. Teasley for three. Maybe Teasley on the season shooting well over 40%. No, 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 no. That was a play of Michael Cooper designed yesterday. Catching with the three ball. And it's a four point game, under four minutes to go. He's got 13. And here comes the Eastern Conference. Michael Cooper calls timeout. Eastern Conference still looking for its first win against the West. And this is the fifth try. This has been a family affair weekend. All-star weekend for the Catchings crew. That'll give mom and dad and sis something to cheer about. We'll be right back after this. Eastern Conference in the middle of a 10-2 run right now. And... A lot of star power on hand here at Madison Square Garden. Robert Klein, the actor comedian on hand. And just a few moments ago, Lisa Leslie taken via stretcher on her way to Beth Israel Hospital to undergo an MRI on that right knee, as reported a few moments ago by Doris Burke. Yeah, Lisa Leslie was dominating inside for the West and 44 points in the paint for the West to the 24 for the East, and that domination with Lisa Leslie hopefully will be okay, but a three-point shot. She could still be the MVP of this ballgame. She's the game's leading scorer with 17 points. Now, catching isn't doing too bad. If you bring them back, she's three or four from three-point range. Teasley outside. Yolanda Griffith's got 11 points already. 
can't just name the MVP for points. Nolan with the three ball. And Griffith walked with it. Eastern Conference has never defeated the Western Conference in this now the fifth attempt. Last year they came close within five. And Don Staley looking for his seventh assist. She had six at halftime, still stuck there. Nikki Teasley has five. Staley says she's got a few more years left in her playing basketball. Nice backdoor cut by Catchings, who was fouled. Well, we talked about the great passing earlier. And today's Cascade Dish and Assist winner, no doubt about this one, Nikki Teasley with five assists today. And that spectacular pass a few minutes ago to Yolanda Griffith. Well, and you look at the five assists. I mean, that, that's ten points there, or could be off the threes, and she's got five points. She's got five rebounds. She's knocked down a three for herself. So, I mean, she's in the running for MVP. That's 14 points now for Catchings. I've got my ballot right in front of me right here. I better <laughs> start filling it scribbling out. a few things down. Williams with a nice rebound inside, battling with Cash. Williams, 10 rebounds. Wide open Catchings. Cash. Boy, there's been a lot of rattlers today. Haven't there? And they turn it over. She was triple team. Sue Bird now. And one. There's two teammates. A little husky hustle right there. Swin Took a hit on the noggin, too. That's right. Swin Cash and Sue Bird graduated at the same time, coming off a national championship and trying to take a shave and a haircut there. <laughs> Sue Bird, the league leader in assists. And taking it herself that time. And another basket scored in the lane for the West. Eight points for Sue Burke. Six-point game. Plenty of time for the East still. A little high pick and roll. Staley and Ketchings. Nolan. Finally got one to fall. She's cheering on her teammate. She's got 13. The lead is down to three. Said the East would have a chance. <laughs> Rich Adubato said it's the best team the East has had. Natalie Williams with the defensive play. And Staley gave it away. Teasley from way downtown, from Brooklyn. Nikki Teasley. She's got eight points along with those five assists. And Deanna Nolan and Nikki Teasley having a little laugh down the court, but what you love about Teasley is this ice in her veins. She's ready to take that shot. You know, the Eastern Conference has had several rattle in and out and go around and out as well. Oh, Teasley nice pass. to Griffiths. Nice pass by Teasley. It's the timing of how she got rid of the basketball. I'm about to fill out my MVP ballot. <laughs> I'm going to give you a clue. She's wearing number 42, and she's having a great time this afternoon. At one point, she's got to tug it on to make a catch his pants like, lighten up, girl. Nikki <laughs> Teasley's come a long way. Staley not ready to give up. Williams with the rebound for the West. And a daunting challenge ahead now for the Eastern Conference. Down by eight points. Williams from Bird. It's a ten-point game. Adrian Williams coming up with the loose ball by the East. Teasley. <laughs> so you got to be ready when number 42 has the ball. Well, she'd have more assists if they put him in. Exactly. <laughs> Nikki Teasley, who was selected as a replacement for Cynthia Cooper, perhaps turning a few more ballots as the game's MVP with this NBA range three-pointer. Well, and then came down with a big rebound on the other end, but, you know, her first All-Star game, you can tell that she's like a little kid being here, playing with such great players. Not that she doesn't play with All-Stars with her Sparks starting right. five. Here she goes again. 
little short. Hey, she's got in the gym range. If she's in the gym, she can fire. A 10-3 Western Conference oh, is that run. Pretty? I tell you, Deanna Nolan's been pretty nice in this game, too. Not many players come across the key like that and stop on a dime. 15 points for Nolan in the contest. Phillips comes back in. Williams comes out. A lot of people are going to be asking questions, Ann, about the Detroit shot and what they're going to do in the second half of the season. They've had a very favorable home court schedule overall. They go on the road a lot in the second half. Jump ball situation after the missed foul shot. Richie's got the, some button pressing to do coming up here. Well, to be quite honest, a lot of people didn't know how the teams would really turn out with the expansion draft, with the holdout, who was going to play with the free agencies. And Detroit, with what they finished last year, was kind of figure, hard to figure out where they were going to be because they had a lot of young players and unknowns. Staley calls timeout and ends up in the front row. Now, Bill Lambeer traded everything and everybody but his old tennis racket. <laughs> Well, tomorrow, some of the PGA Tour's best tee off in the final round of the Greater Milwaukee, actually Greater Milwaukee Open. Live at 2 Eastern, 11 a.m. Pacific, right here on ABC Sports. Home of the British Open. Milwaukee, a great town where my folks are from. And Familiar name on the leaderboard. Uh, you get out on the links quite a bit, Anna. Well, not as much as I'd like to, but Kenny <laughs> Perry, uh, just one stroke lead over four other guys. But I like to have to say, too, that I'd like to congratulate Bob Buecher going into the Baseball Hall of Fame from Milwaukee and the Milwaukee Brewer Broadcasting. From one Hall of Famer to another. Today's run, a mosaic of classic and spectacular women's basketball. Bird with the fortuitous bounce. Says, I'll take it anyway. Teasley, little slip and slide move inside. And Bird dropping the dime to teammate Lauren Jackson. Teasley crossing up everybody who gets within arm's reach of her. And then this one was the showstopper to Yolanda Griffith for the three-point play. Nikki Teasley saying, yeah, I got it like that. <laughs> it's interesting to see the mutual respect that these players have for one another. Well, stay tuned, except on the West Coast. For ABC's World News Tonight, Saturday, or your local news. Because what's happened is a lot of them are able to continue to play against each other because of this league, the WNBA, where in the past you look at the Yolanda Griffith and Jennifer Gillen, players that had to go overseas and play and then come back. Cynthia Cooper, a perfect example. But now they're continuing to play against each other for a long period of time. The average age of players in the league has dropped, and the talent level has risen markedly. Eight-point game, Sue Bird, fouled in the backcourt by Ketchings with 43 seconds to go. But an incredible journey by the WNBA. At first, the average age was around 32, 33 years old seven seasons ago. Now the average age in the mid to late 20s, and the talent level continues to rise. And you look at the veteran players, that Lisa Leslie is now in her 30s, as Cheryl Swoops is, as Dawn Staley is, and, you know, Shamiko Holzclaw, Tamika Ketchings, younger players at 25, 23 years old, but they seem like veteran players. Sue Bird, one of the new school, new guard, knocks down the foul shot. She's got nine, and one. And if you come with me, you can get into her after party tonight. <laughs> well, Does it allow children? <laughs> hey, we can make it work. You know, I got the I kids some with <laughs> Don Staley across the midcourt line. A 10-point deficit for the East. And they got to hit some quick threes. Got to work fast. Phillips inside. Wheeling on Griffin got it to call. Well, it's like five in a row for the West. Well, technically now, well. technically, Houston played in the Eastern Conference. The very first, first year, year yeah. when there were eight teams, <laughs> they were the, in the East. And I'm saying five West All-Star right. victories. Well, let's look ahead to the second half of the WNBA season in the Eastern Conference. Detroit coming back to the pack just a little bit, losing to Charlotte a couple of nights ago. Charlotte usurping them for first place. Well, and yet it's so deceiving. You look at somebody like New York, 14 games, they have played four games less than the number one team out there. 
with Charlotte, and it will all add up. The, the end of the season, the last week, Mark, it's going to come down to the last one or two games as far as who's going to be in the playoffs. Well, if you're just joining us, Lisa Leslie, the three-time All-Star MVP, taken from the game, taken to the hospital right now, on her way to get an MRI done at Beth Israel Hospital here in New York City because of a leg injury. Suffered about eight minutes ago. Our Western Conference team since that point taking the lead. They lead by 10. There's one more look at that injury suffered when Swin Cash fell into her leg. And that was really a turning point for the West team as far as a great block by Lauren Jackson. But Swin Cash, I know Michael Cooper wanted a foul somewhere, but there really wasn't a foul because Swin Cash's body just rebounded off of Jackson. And you see Lisa Lass Lessons being carried off in the stretcher to go to the hospital for more x-rays. Well, you have to wonder right now, the question begs, how is that going to affect the picture in the Western Conference Los Angeles at 15 and three, four and a half up on Houston, who's starting to surge a little bit right now. And you can't think the teams are licking their chops thinking that Lisa Leslie might be out, but this is a perfect example of Michael Cooper has talked about all season long that he has had players on the bench that feel that they can step in. And he's had some injuries this year. He's had players that have sit out, Moani Mabika, and Tamika Dixon missed uh, a little bit, but you know they lost Latasha Byers. But Lisa Leslie has been the mainstay. But they, he feels that he's got players that can step in and, and replace her. Yeah, Los Angeles has gotten everybody's best effort so far this year. They started off the season with four consecutive games on the road, winning all four before finally coming home to get their rings. So they've been in tough spots and pinches before, but certainly nothing like the one that would evolve if. Lisa Leslie would be out for a little bit. And it comes down to injuries in this league, too. You know, a lot of players will have nagging injuries, and when they get them during the season. Catchings with the three ball. I better not talk too soon, Hold eh? Hold on a minute. 82 to 75 with 30.5 to go to make a catchings. Rep in Indiana very well with 17 points of the game. On the East have got quite a few three-point shooters out there. Don't forget, stay tuned, except on the West Coast, for ABC's World News Tonight, Saturday, or your local news. They try to double-team the inbound pass. Here's Sue Bird. Teasley doing her best, Marcus Haynes. Bird fouled by Staley. Sue Bird's taking a few hits here. <laughs> Get one from her former UConn teammate. Well, she's had a great smile throughout the whole time, and you talked about the relationship that these players have, and... There's respect from the veteran players to the younger players that are coming in. And Sue Bird had a chance to play on the world championship team this year with, you know, Jennifer Gillum was the oldest player on that team. But Lisa Leslie, Dawn Staley, Cheryl Swoops, Tamika Ketchings, and Delisha Milton. I mean, players that have been on the Olympics. And so Sue Bird, a player young into this league, and a lot of demand as far as expectations that people have on her. Both on and off the court. She's been a busybody. Class Keeping lady. commitments with a lot of sponsors. Here's Catchings. And Griffith is fouled by Tamika Catchings. 83 points by the Western Conference. An all-star game record. Michael Cooper didn't get the dollar bill, didn't get the 100 that he expected coming in. But the win, I'm certain he'll take that. Third year in a row that the West has gotten 80 points or more. And if you're just now becoming a WNBA fan, Nikki Teasley, one of the bright quasars, to keep an eye on in the future. She hit the game winner to clinch it against the New York Liberty in the finals last season. As Griffith knocks down the foul shot. I tell you, after watching this All-Star game, USA Basketball is going to have a tough time picking some of these other Olympians. <laughs> it's one of the trends now in the WNBA is you're starting to see some bigger point guards like Nikki Teasley, although she remains a little bit unique in how she handles the ball. A lot of people also are looking at Diana Trossi to come in from Connecticut with her size. This one is cooked, glazed, and sliced as the Western Conference makes it five in a row against the East. 84 to 75, and the MVP of the game. We'll have that in just a bit. Your MVP is going to be Nikki Teasley. Shooting the ball and passing the ball, displaying her crazy range from outside. And her passing. I'll tell you, if you watch her game closely enough, she reminds you of a 
a drive through window at a fast food restaurant, you, you get close enough, you're going to get fed. Often. Nikki Teasley with a lot of assists, 10 in all, actually, 6 in all. As the Western Conference wins, 84 to 75 behind the leadership in the backcourt from the second year pro out of the University of North Carolina. Let's go to Doris Burke, who's standing by. Doris? Ladies and gentlemen, to present the most valuable player, please welcome the president of the WNBA, Val Ackerman. Thank you, Doris. I want to thank our fans all around the country, and especially this incredible Madison Square Garden crowd for joining us today. Thank you. I want to congratulate all of our players. Ladies, you know how to play basketball. Thanks for a great show, and I know our fans appreciate everything that you do, both on and off the court. And now it's my great pleasure to introduce the 2003 WNBA MVP presented by Chevy. Ten points, six assists, six rebounds from the Los Angeles Sparks, Nikki Teasley. Nikki Teasley, I know it had to be hard to focus when you lost your teammate, Lisa Leslie. Can you send out any wishes to her right now? Uh, yeah, you never want to see a player go down. Um, Lisa's definitely been an inspiration to me. Uh, I immediately pray to God for her, her health and her safetyness. Nothing happens without God. I just want to give the glory and the honor to him right now for everything that we have, all these players, everybody here. Uh, Lisa's a strong individual, and she's going to recover from this. And uh, I'm just blessed to be in this situation, and I'm very happy right now. Congratulations on your MVP. Thank you. Mark, let's go back to you. All right, thanks a lot, Doris. The final score once again, the Western Conference making it five in a row, 84 to 75. ABC Sports is online at ESPN.com, keyword ABC Sports for the entire talented gang. Now except on the West Coast, stay tuned for ABC's World News tonight, Saturday, or your local news over most of these ABC stations. They say it's all right. They say it's all right. Say it's all right. Have a good time. Cause it's all right. Everybody knows that it's all right.